You've heard it said, the secrets of the DTC, things like that. and Some of the things you'll be doing in there, and some of you ask certain questions about certain things on there, and wanted to know when, what's the date, and the time and now I'm going to have to say this in regards to those questions how many of you can keep it secret Now, let me say this. In California, we passed out the banker's consent form. And we told them, individuals in Kelly, we said, listen, we're going to give this form to you all only. They said, we'll make sure that no one else gets it. They have told the internet. I said, good, because if you put it out there like that, it'll be just like when Gene told the people about San Juan, Puerto Rico. They flooded them instantly. <laughs> security went in there and shut it all down. <laughs> like, what is this? Now, the consent form almost can act in the capacity. So, you cannot. Now, I know you all have it because last night I heard it was 40 people in the hallway <laughs> saying, hey, look at us, you guys. We all got the consent form. And we finna utilize $999,999.99 every day. Now you have to be discreet with what you have and what you do with it. Okay? Now I'm gonna have a raise of hands. How many of you have the consent forms here right now? Very few. Good, because I was going to go over it. Maybe I should go over it. And <laughs> now, I know you spent a whole day <laughs> filling out a form that takes five minutes. <laughs> And after that, you sign the document, and the document just simply is your no nature and your thumbprint, and you send it in for your signature card. And then you are allowed to utilize your credit card. Every single day for the rest of your life, you can go and empty out every ATM machine that you choose. Now we have an individual in here who signed up for Treasury Direct. Been in here all along with a legacy card and no one ever asked him any question. Nobody never asked. I ain't even gonna tell you where he's sitting. <laughs> So that the, we we did want to go over the consent form 
and have a um, session on that. But I wanted at least you all to take the opportunity to at least experience trying to figure it out. <laughs> you can't try in a, in a half in in four hours and then say we tried. <laughs> Now let's see how much paperwork it took for you to try to figure it out. <laughs> Come here, let me see. You have a Is it the Wow! Now let me say, let me show something to you all. I don't know if y'all know how Jean read. Now let me show you how the I read. They, there is a program that could teach you to read books like this. You take your thumb and you hold your hand on the book and you, as your hand goes back like this, and then you open the book up accordingly as such. This ain't a book, of course, it's not going to do it the right way. And the pages will flick through and your memory will ca capture images and not words. Thereby, you could read a book in such a thickness like this in maybe 15 minutes. Okay? You have to train yourself for that, for images and not words. We slow our process down by trying to focus on every single word and not focus on photographs. A picture is worth how many words? You follow? So you teach yourself like that. That's the way my parents taught me to read. You see, I just gave you a clue to how you're supposed to read. That's why when you see me look at your documents, it looks like I just looked at it and gave it back to you. You see, you teach yourself how to see the page and know what was there. I just read that whole page. I just looked at it. That was it. I'm done reading that. Okay? That takes practice. You can start that out by looking at pictures and then describing everything on a picture, okay? Words are just that simple, but you have to train yourself to do things like that. They do have a program out there that you can do that with. It's called speed reading. Now, we was going to go through that, but he got a lot of stuff on it. How long did it take us to fill that paperwork out? Yeah. Didn't take us long at all. Now when you fill it out, you send it in, you get a call. And you get a call right away, don't you? When you get the call, they're going to ask you a couple questions. And they're going to ask you simple questions. Are you... Opening up a bank, and you're going to be like, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's one of them yes and no yes. You, know? you want to know if they know you did it or didn't. Yes. Be firm. Yes, I'm opening up a bank. Then they go to ask you a couple of questions on the format. You then with the master account. You're utilizing certain numbers on there. Who gave you the authority and permission to do that? And where did those numbers come from? The backside of my social security card? Did I get that right? <laughs> yes! I'm giving you guys the answers to the uh, application. <laughs> you ain't heard nothing. Line and box underneath your straw man and so forth, an account number. You get in this little bitty box and you check two boxes in there. And you do that on every single page except 
three and four, and you check all four. I didn't give y'all all the answers, and that's it. That's how you fill it out. Done deal. Now, if you'd had your format, your paperwork out, you'd have knew what I was talking about. Okay, now, let's get to the heart of this thing. Maybe one day, after you, after you take the time to look it up. Now, I did fill it out for a couple of people. Okay? Now, here we're dealing with the DTC. You know that this is the Depository Trust Company. The, the terminology and the word that we're really looking at is it's a trust company. Okay? We want to make noted to you this. That you must punch up for me, not punch up for me the CUSIP form information. That you must, in, in the fact of this, being the trust, and then I want you to look up the wizard form, because I did tell them they're going to see the wizard. You need to know this too. You need to know which wizard form you're dealing with and why you're dealing with it and what's the purpose of it. What kind of account are you going in with? How many individuals have their accounts all ready to go? Okay, we still have individuals. And the majority is ready. Those of you who are, have not yet done this, please make sure that when you leave here and you go ahead, open up an interest bearing account and a non interest bearing account. Hold it. Okay? Make sure you do that right away. Yes. Good question. Just wasn't on the mic. And nobody else could benefit from that. <laughs> Should those two accounts be at different banks or separate or at the same bank? I would. I would put them in separate banks. I tell individuals do not utilize the same bank. Because I know what the end result is going to be. You're going to bring the wrong account, and it's not going to go through. I'm only telling you that because I know it's, it'll happen. And you could be excellent in the things you do, but when it comes down to that, you're going to make that mistake. It's just like the best pool players you've ever seen. The more money get on the table, the more he starts shaking to miss to make that shot. So don't do that, okay? Please separate them. Use T Bank for the interest bearing account if you want. T Bank. The reason why is because if you use them for the non interest bearing account, they're gonna steal your money. T Bank. They good at they good at uh shutting it down, but they ain't good at keeping it open. Somehow they say, oh, it never arrived. I had incidents with individuals that didn't get what they thought they were going to get. So certain banks like Key Bank don't use them. Not for the nine inches band. You can use them for the interest band, but not the nine inches band. Okay? Remember that. So for those of you who have not yet opened your account, go do that right now. If you have one card, two cards, or three cards, make sure that those cards have an account per card. That's, that's what that part's all about. I knew I'd get him. <laughs> yes. Um, the, the account that you open up, the interest-bearing account, or both of the accounts, um, can you use that account or should it, no transactions? 
If you do what again? Well, you open up the interest-bearing account. Okay. Say I opened up Bank of America. They're charging $25 a month to keep it open. Mm -hmm. I only put $75 in. I'm coming to the end of that. Can I put more money in there okay. and keep it open? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so it doesn't matter with the transaction. And, and just to verify what you're saying about Key Bank, I know someone personally who works for the OCC, and, and they're not fairly right. I mean, they didn't have very nice things to say about them at all. So I know it. No, they don't have nothing nice to say about them. They know what I know. It's not good. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Tony. Um, on both account, do both accounts uh, do they have to be open with your social security number and your straw man name, or can you use a different name and or uh, different like TIN or tax number? Are they both the non-interest and the interest bearing have to be uh, with the social security number and your straw man name. Yes, they both does. Okay, they both have to be that simply because that's the uh, company that you're shutting down. Thank you. Yes. Help me understand, on the form you had said earlier today to put down the interest-bearing account Only. That, that you're going to close. Yes. Okay, and the instructions say the account that's going to be credited. If we close an account, mm -hmm. how is it going to be credited? That's how. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you answered the question. Now let me show you how. When you open up account, you will carry in 250K on the private side, okay? That is the FDIC side, okay? That's what's hold on this side. You ever heard of the word overdraft? The reason for overdraft is simply because you utilized up every cent that was on this side. Let's say you had 500 and you spent 501 that put you into your insurance so they charge you simply because you overdraft you went from the public to the private so you had to pay the cost of maybe $35 until you bring this back current they're charging you for utilizing the FDIC side that's private now, simply because you were public and you came in with your SSN, they can continue to charge you. If you five days, they'll charge you a little more. And every four days from that point on, they continue to charge you and charge you and charge you. And all you have to do is tell them, like, look. I'm not paying you a dime. If you want the account to be brought back to zero, just close the account. That right there just brings the account back to zero. How is that? Because this is insurance, period. This here, the FDIC is right here in the DTC. That doesn't move. So if they want to balance out the book, just set the account down. That's what you're going to do. When you close down the account of the 250, the only thing going to happen is the FDIC portion is going to go right back to the DTC. That's why I stipulated on there, was this a fast entry? You see? Yes, it's a fast because it didn't really move. Only thing you did was shut the account down and the currency just changed names. It went back to the DTC. How do you understand that as a fast entry? You see that bottle sitting right there? The red bottle? Can I have that bottle? No, 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 don't get up. Can I have it? That's all you had to say. Now it's my bottle. That's a fast entry. You see? It just went from him to me. Fast. No movement took place. See, bookkeeping entries is really not a movement. The way individuals look at it, like something went from way over here and traveled all the way over there. That's not what happens. You close the account down and the currency just transfers from one account to the next account. That's why you notice on the paper, uh, can you scroll back down before we get to this? 
You notice it said on their closing date. You see that? You have a closing date, not an opening date. Because they're talking about the day you're going to close down the FDIC side of the account. That it might open up the DTC side of the account, which instantly from that day forth is your offering amount. Now, remember we talked about an offering earlier? You see, that, that was like a sacrifice, see, for you to be able to utilize the currency that you have. Okay? Who is that with their fingers on their head? You thinking? <laughs> She's like, y'all giving me too much information. Jean gave me 12 years of books to read. <laughs> <laughs> okay next question Pastor Tony uh, yes. regarding the uh, interest bearing and non interest bearing accounts mm -hmm. uh, just say hypothetically now I didn't do this myself I didn't do this myself but okay um, it was just a friend I know. yeah friend <laughs> Uh, someone OID the bank that they put the interest bearing account in, open the interest bearing account. Mm -hmm. With would that affect the outcome, or would they what, um, connect that? No, no. This is what you want to do. When we say don't do no transactions with it, it's mm -hmm. not because. Um, you could really affect it by putting money in because when you close it, I mean, you're really going to get all that back anyway. Okay. But we don't want you to do the transactions because we don't want you to overdraft the account. And then if you overdraft, here you is at the retreat and somehow you didn't spend a penny over, you see, or a dollar over, now you're in a negative. You didn't just brought the 250 down to 40, you see what I mean, 249, you see what I mean, 99. You see, you don't, that's why we keep saying, don't use it. These accounts that you open up, do not use them, period. Let them sit idle. They're ready to do the job that they're set for. That's all you have to remember. Well, it's not that this individual uh, used the account. They just, they had another account mm -hmm. that they OID with the same bank. Mm -hmm. So that's okay? Oh, he didn't mess with this account. He just right. no. Oh, he's fine. Okay. Yeah. Lead, it, lead account for this purpose, only for that purpose, only. You'll be fine. That way you know, I know this is fine. Yes. I am asking this question on behalf of somebody else. No problem. Um, <clears throat> I know it was a friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, he went down and got himself a, 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 yes. an uh, interest-bearing account opened up. Yes. And what the bank did was they checked his credit rating, mm -hmm. and they closed it, and they sent him back the check for $100. Hmm. So, which would be the next step for him to do? Good one. Go there. They won't shut nobody down. Matter of fact, if you spend all the money, you try to shut it down, they'll give you more money. Wood Forest. Walmart. Again. Tony, can I ask a quick question? Yes. Are those checking or savings? Are they checking or savings accounts? Uh, <coughs> checking accounts. Both of those accounts must be checking accounts. Okay, and you put in the, the minimum. That's whatever. correct. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So all you need is the minimum to do the job. You'll be fine. Now. Let me let me shed a little light on some things, and this is, I, I always do this to speak all over the room. That was 
I had an incident where I had 12 individuals going in, okay? Thus one individual removed himself, and I just came to find out that uh, another individual had went on a talk show and kind of removed himself. So I ended up with two positions of the 12 open. And then at the time, I wasn't thinking about it until I got a phone call today. And I realized I had two positions open, but I had already gave uh, one of the positions to one of the warriors. You see, you know, Michael was a warrior. But I still had another position open because one of the other individuals went on the talk show to bash me and did all them things. And he didn't want his position. So they ended up being the second position open. So then by that being the case, now I have that second position open for the other individual who had came to me and inquired and, and proved to be a worthy warrior to stipulate and show and authenticate the fact that it wasn't so much about the currency but about the courage. So that position is open for that individual and he know who he is and, and we'll get together and we'll make sure that is done. Now, with that said, I'm going to move on. Now here we have the CUSIP information. The exclusive information, this form here is a document in which have all of the DTC under, this is the DTC underwriting department phone numbers. Every number in there in which you want to do is there. Corporate number is there, the way you're going in. Muni number is there, the way you would not want to go in. And then their fax number. Notice, scroll on up, I mean down. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Now, and then you also have this number right here, just in case you think you double uh, what they call them individuals, dual citizens. You corporate and muni. I ain't even got into that yet, and I don't want to. So you can be corporate and muni with that. But you're dealing with corporate, so you don't got to worry about this. That's, that's some heavy stuff. Okay, now, note this, that that is the number in which you will be always utilizing to talk to the individual that's in there. Go up again, down to the authorization for closing. This here is the number in which we would call you see, once you're in there and you want to bring in someone else, remember this. They're going to ask the same question. Are you coming corporate or municipal? Or corporate? They're going to just say corporate or muni. You see that muni right there? You see that? Muni. That's how they say it too. Corp or muni. And the individual say, I'm coming muni. Anyone in here think they can handle that? Now, when you call the authorized closing office, that's the, what they're going to ask you. You're going to say corporate for the other individuals, and then they'll open up their amount of account under your participant number when you show them what you've done. That's the reason for the week class. It's because you're going to strictly only be dealing with the crucifix form, the wizard form, you see. I want you to get your uh, securities and commodity book. You need to get the book that Gene was telling you about on UCCs with the units of trial convention listed therein. These are books you need to know. And this is what you need to know. You need to know about, you see what I'm talking about, uh, these particular rules here. One through six, under the security exchange, you see, 11 through 13, so you all getting the heads up. You see, 46 section 3, 47 section 1, and also 53. No, this is under the Security and Commodities Act. 
It's a book that you need to get. Okay? And you're going to look all these things up under the Unicitral Convention. You see? Unicitral Convention. If you get the UCC book, it'll have that in it. You must know this right here. Because when you're drafting up your checks, these things have to be on there to make your checks able to be cashed. Under the UCC, uh, it's in the UCC book. The Unison Trial Convention is listed in there. You come to the mic because you got, I see right now you, you thinking about it. And then you could ask your question, but go ahead. Credit unions are allowed or not? No. Only reason the credit unions are not allowed, you have to check if the credit union is under the FDIC or did they opt out of the program. Even some of the banks are opted out of the program. So don't just go to any bank without asking are uh, they opted out. Because if they opt out of the program, you'll be at the window. That includes the non-interest bearing account too, right? None, don't, don't use nothing that's not uh, in the program. Please ask that question to them. Make sure they're not opted out. Yes. Uh, thanks for clarifying this. Now, I'm probably going to go home and go, where am I supposed to find that stuff? So, do I go on the internet and look under what you can publication? Under, you can look up the Unison Trial Convention on the internet. Probably go to Wikipedia. Now, you're saying UCC? Unison Trial Convention. This, these acts here, you talking about the uh, the articles I'm talking about? All those One through the, six? All the, yeah, you That's right. under the Security Exchange. Security Exchange. The Securities and Commodities. Okay. And in the one forty seven And these articles are under the Unicitral Convention. That's where they are at. It's on the UN. All right. Thank you. No, we ain't supposed to give no cheating. This is the I know it was I want them to be able to Oh, you finna pass them out? You can copy them? No. This one too? Yeah. See he has them. No. You can get this off the internet. This isn't complicated. I know it. I know where you got it from. I'm trying to tell him. He he has the convention. He just got it off the internet. This is it. Alrighty, we'll put it on the board. Man, y'all drive a hard bargain. Gene talked about it all week. Promissory notes. Okay. Thank you, Pastor Tony. Uh, if the IRS has previously leaned other bank accounts, should I be concerned about opening up accounts uh, too early, or should I file any GSA forms before opening up those accounts? Two good banks, Woodforce, and another good bank. U.S. Bank. Those two banks, 
whatever you ask they do. You don't even have to have an account with them and they give uh, what's, what's those um, them checks? Certified checks. Most banks will not do it. They'll do it. They don't care. And so utilize either Woodforce or U.S. Bank. Good banks. Excellent banks. Woodforce. That's not Walmart. That's Woodforce. Yes, it's Woodforce. They located in Walmart. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or, or some other, other locations abroad, you know, depending on. And if they're not local to me, I just could do it on the Internet or something? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. And you're saying that they won't, the IRS can't lean those accounts? I ain't saying that. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you just put words all in my mouth. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Now, I, you still need to do your um, your UCC. No, not, what am I talking about? You still need to do your GSA filings, okay? Make sure you get do your UCC filings before you start. So do my UCC files before I open up the accounts? Yeah, b okay. open up the accounts right away. Okay, but not the GSA forms, do the UCC one? No, do, let, let me say that again. Okay. I might be saying something I ain't supposed to be uh, trying to say. <laughs> do your GSA filings at the same time you're opening up the account with very minimal currency therein. Mm -hmm. Thereby, by the time they really look and see who it is, it then already went through. And your account is matured. So the 30 days it takes for them to lean you, it will be the same time it will take for the account to be the matured. And I need to file a 2890 and 2891. And if they don't want to listen to you, put in the 14 series, 14, 16, 14, 18, and pay them whatever it is they say they want. Thank you, sir. That's what those would do. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hi. Just a quick question. We wanted to be able to have our the UCC handbook just as to keep as reference. So I went on to uh, Thompson Publishing, mostly yes. uh, mm -hmm. all the law books are there. But uh, they, I'm assuming, and I, sir, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. it, although the Unicetral Convention is separate from the UCC books, will yeah. the new additions, the 08 or 09 publishment, include the amendments to the UCC codes as per the Unicetral? Yeah, let me see. Jane, what's the name of the Unicetral uh, book that's in the UCC book? The UCC book with the Unicef Trawl Convention listed in it. What's it called? Uh, the the Unicef Trawl Convention is, is referenced in uh, uh, ULA, Uniform Laws Annotated, which is the master text for the, for the UCC. And it's referenced in Article 3 of the ULA, Uniform Laws Annotated. Thank you. Now that, that gives and it says what it says in there is that the Article Three is superseded by the Unicetral Convention because the United States, I believe, they entered in into was it 1990? Mm -hmm, 1988. 1988. Yeah. Now you see that what made it supersede Article Three because it was international. You see. Yes. All right. Um, this has to do with uh, accepting the birth certificate for value uh, security agreement. If somebody hasn't done that already, would okay. you still recommend doing that, or is that extraneous at this point? It's useless, really. Useless. Yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> I mean, look what you're gonna what you're gonna have. I mean, where you're gonna be at? No, no. I just wanted to clarify. I know. That. Yeah. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Hey, Tony, I was just wondering there, did you just mention something about the GSA forms with, uh, in conjunction with these accounts? No, no, he was... Uh, was something total, total different? Yeah, that okay. was totally different. Okay. Yes. Okay. Do not go off uh, sharing that information, but now you see the urgency for you to get what you have to get done. You do not have that much time for that. Pastor Tony, question for you. Uh, I, I remember from previous conferences you said that people who have attended their registration forms would benefit you to send them ahead. 
What about people who want to do, be here but could not be here? registration and send it to you? No. I don't even know what you're talking about. Who is it? I've never even seen them before. See how, you see all this? You know what? I can remember every last one of you all. Hate to be so ignorant, but it seems like you're going over some information I've never heard before. I know. Um, I am. I mean, I thought I had a pretty good handle on it, but then you said you got to do your UCC filings and your GSA filings at the same time no. you do. Well, I'm glad you no, guys all was, understand that was, some, it, that was something different. He was, he was, uh, his. Let me explain what was happening. See how you two weird thing go. No, what happened was he had a situation with the IRS and they were seizing his funds. Okay, so that's a whole different thing. I can just wipe that oh, out of my yeah, memory. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two bank accounts, interest bearing, non interest bearing. Correct. The interest bearing gets the 250 once we're in, and then you shut it down right away. There you go. And you're still getting money because of the insurance, the FDIC insurance. No. Okay, so I guess you need to explain that to me. And okay. what what's with the non-interest bearing? What where, where does that come into play? Good. Now we got a good question. Oh. Not to say the other questions wasn't good. Now we'll go through that. Now, y'all see, I wanted to go through the CUSIP information and the wizard information. She said, I can explain it to you later. <laughs> okay, this account here, really, this is the most important part of this right now for you all. That's why I can't leave nobody out the interest bearing account okay this account here is utilized the 250 is the offering amount that they're asking for okay on the FDIC can we scroll down on the uh, eligibility questionnaire form again Go back to the top of the eligibility questionnaire form, right there. Okay. Now you see where it says up here, it says issue principal offering amount. You see that right there? Issue, issue principal offering amount. That is based upon each one of your social security cards that you get, you're allowed 10 social security cards per lifetime. Each one of the social security cards bear a number on the back. The number on the back is the bond number that relates you back to a Federal Reserve Bank. It takes you right to the Federal Reserve Bank. Okay? And by it doing that, when you take the 250 per card, because that is the offering amount to open up the uh, DTC. Okay? You need $250,000 to open up a DTC account. And
and you must have handled one million dollars in your lifetime. If you haven't done that, forget about opening up a DTC account. You can't open up one. If you've handled a million dollars, you're fine. How many people in here have handled a million dollars? See? <laughs> Even if you didn't know it, <laughs> you handled a million dollars. You know why? Because in the DTC, you are handling all the time from underwriting, that's why that's an underwriting department, $3.5 billion units all your life. All your life. So to beat and handle a million isn't anything. How do you think you got your credit card and your house and all of the things that you have? It's by your signature that caused things to move. Isn't that true? Treasury Department did do what they said. HDR 192 is real, isn't it? See? So you've all done it. But the key is you have to know it. And that's the whole reason why you're going into this location to utilize the currency that you have on the private side. Now, in lieu of that, how many of you have your Social Security cards here with you right now? Take it out and look at the back of it. Get acquainted with your private sector. A lot of you talking about going in there utilizing the consent application. So for the most part, if you really want to know the power that you have, even though it's going to kick back, go ahead on and buy something right now. Take your car and purchase something. You're going to see it's going to go through. The only reason it's going to route back is because they do not have your signature and your thumbprint to verify you or you. Oh. That's what's missing. That's correct. Other than that, you're fine. And that will show you that uh, there's currency in there for you. Okay? Now, he asked a good question. So here you have the, this particular portion. This, was, this part here is an interest-bearing account. Now that means that it is a limited account. You understand? What made it limited? Simply because it only bears 250K. That's what made it limited. Once you use up to 250, it's over with. That's why it's a closed account. And that's why it have a closing date. You follow? Now, when you go see the wizard, you're gonna understand that even more. Can we pull up the wizard form while we're still here? And I wanna bounce back to this. Now see, I told y'all we're going to go through a little bit more. It's going to get a little bit heavy. You have two different wizard forms that you're dealing with. One of the wizard forms is the trade payment wizard. International Documentary Collection Against Payment. That's not the one you want. You can't use that one to enter in to the DTC. You see, you need the acceptance wizard. Because it will not be upon payment, it will be upon acceptance. Acceptance is the one that's right from the beginning. Okay? These are some of the formats in which you're going to put in, you see, 
to give you the authority and the power that you have. You'll notice on the documentation it has the date, the day, the, you see the month and the year. Who is the drawer on the instrument? The drawer, the customer, the seller. Who is that individual? You see? A draft, a draft is done by the drawer. And a drawer summons to the drawee. The drawer just so happens to be the surety. The drawee just so happens to be the bank. Now when you're dealing with the acceptance form, this one's still saying payment, but that's okay, you'll understand it. When you're dealing with the acceptance form, the draw E isn't the DTC. See? The draw E is the bank in which you are shutting down. You see? And then the draw E, you see the draw er is summoning the draw E to send payment to the DTC, which is the 250K. That's the acceptance wizard. Payment wizard is after you accept it, then the drawer is you. The draw E becomes the DTC from that day forth. And you only need to fill out one payment wizard as opposed to one acceptance wizard, one of each unless you choose to open up another bank. If you say, well, I don't like this bank. Uh, I made a mistake and I signed up with Key and every time my money go through, they lose it. Only if you really knew. You turn around and uh, say, well, I want to open up another non-interest bank account and then I'm going to go over here to Chase. Well, I'm going to go over here to Bank of America. Well, I'm going to go over here to U.S. Bank. U.S. Bank is a good bank. I, I've seen them and I know for myself. They help you even if you all messed up. Got two broke legs and no arms and your head cut off. <laughs> They'll help you anyway. You don't even have to be a member. So I, I am uh, saying this, that I'm vouching for them for some odd reason. I, that's, that's a hard one for me to vouch for any bank. And that one, uh, they got thumbs up. <laughs> that ain't to say if a whole bunch of individuals start going in there, they might start messing up. <laughs> so now you see how this is done. If, if you choose to change the bank at the time, you still can. Okay? You can turn around, change the bank to another bank, and then you have to put in another payment wizard form, okay? For the new bank that you're going in with, because now all the currency is going to be funneled into there. It's called the portal. Don't you know that when you deal with the number that was on that documentation, when it said call the NASDAQ? When you call your NASDAQ, and when you call... The number that's on that form, you're going to talk to Grace, and she is the portal person. She's going to give you some grace. She's going to pass your documents through, you see, from one to the other. Now, I could say this to you, too. This is just how, this is how keen this is. It's how powerful this is. You do not have to utilize the bank. The nine inches band account. Ah, you're beginning to catch on. For those of you who will not bring two accounts to the retreat. Because you're still going to get your very first check the next day. So what will you have to do when you leave? Go to the Federal Reserve Bank on the back side of your card and cash in your check. What am I trying to tell you here? 
When you leave, the first one is going to be done for you. You have a number on the back side of your car. They put F, that's Atlanta. They might put D, that's Cleveland. You might put C, that's Philadelphia. You see what I mean? You might put E, that's Richmond, Virginia. You, you see what I'm talking about? So your very first one that you get, you might have to go to that particular location and cash in your very first IBOE. You see? Because it portals from the DTC to the Federal Reserve Bank. From the Federal Reserve Bank, it goes to your bank account that you opened up, be it a non-interest bearing account. That's how it portals through. Okay? But simply because I'm not going to allow you to bring the non-interest bearing account, you're going to have to go and pick it up yourself on the first time. Simply because we want no mistakes. Otherwise, you just choose not to at the time accept it, then that's on you too. Okay? I'm talking about the very first one. You can wait and, you know what I mean? Because you don't want to mess the very first transaction up. First impressions are everlasting. <laughs> You get one shot at this with me. You can get another shot by yourself. Maybe with somebody else in the group. I'm going to do this once and I'm done. Okay? So it's important that from the retreat, when we go from there, I'm going to tell you something. And don't tell this to nobody else. <laughs> We talked about the seven seals today, didn't we? We talked about a book that was sealed. Do you know they're talking about collapsing the banks and the currency? The bankers is going on a national holiday and ain't going to come back to next year, the year after next, the year 2011. I wonder by what means will this society move? And I must wonder, if I might, what the president meant when he said, I'm going to get the private side moving first, and then the public. You think I don't know what's going on? I done told you over and over again who currency was. I ain't say what it was. I said who it was. There ain't no mystery to me why this thing is the way it is and why I had to do what I had to do. I took y'all a little bit further than the things you need to know. But let me share this with you before we, let me get him down because I don't know everybody could stand up like me 24 hours a day. And Jews. <laughs> That's why I try to get shoes that is comfortable. Go ahead and ask your question. I, don't, I won't have you stand there too long. Pastor, then continue. I wanted to bring up the card we had talked about earlier. Go ahead and speak on it. Okay. I had gotten one of these about a year ago. They came out for the first time June 2008. Mm. It's a U.S. State Department passport card, United States of America. Mm -hmm. It's only to be used for land and sea travel between the United States, Canada, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Bermuda. For $10, you can get an addition to a passport. I noticed on it because... I was actually born in Philadelphia, and my Social Security cards always have a C on them. Mm -hmm. This card has a Cusick number on it, starting with C and eight digits mm -hmm. after it. So we have another one where they're getting money on us. Mm -hmm. Now, my question on this is, would we use this as another Cusick number or not? No. They're using it as the... 
inclusive number, but not for you. Okay. Let me share something with you. Every time you sign any documentation, it doesn't matter what it is. Whatever documentation you ever sign, yeah. they collect on it. Yeah. Your signature, how much? One million. Mm -hmm. Your souls, how much? One million. By the time you are done, how much? Two million. Now you didn't hear us speak this weekend about the Circle 750 and talked about the Seventh Circuit Court, showed you how the Seventh Circuit Court was listed in there with the, see what I'm talking about, the Chicago Board of Trades, what they're doing in there, and then talked about how they always was also was connected to the U.S. Treasury Department. What are you talking about? A court connected in all these aspects. What's going on? You see? See? Go ahead with your question. Pastor Tony, is it hard to get in one of the Federal Reserve Banks? I mean, there's so many guards outside. <laughs> you, do you just walk in? I was, you know what, let me tell you. You know what's funny? 70 guards, which one you go to? Atlanta. Tours. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, I don't know how yours is like that. Where we had the went at the wrong time of day. <laughs> they must have been what doing the parade or something. No, it was when we were there in Atlanta for the uh, seminar. Oh, that's why. No, it's not normally that way. It's because you were there, right? California. <laughs> <laughs> so we can just walk in there and do our banking business. He live up there, so okay. he don't know. No, it ain't like that. So we can just walk in there and do business like we're doing our you got hometown a bank. Number, yes, you do. Well, I've never, never been there, but I know that the California guys, the California group, went on a tour. Those guys, yeah, you, you went right, Valentino. Yeah. So, do you, do you want to share that information? Of, Did he cash an IBO? No, I think they went on a tour no, just to see. You what said, was can going you on. walk in? <laughs> Oh, you I walk mean, walk your paperwork in there? I yeah, you have, go in you, there. You, 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 you'll be a participant. You'll be fine. Okay. That, that's a whole different level. Okay. Thank you. Mm hmm Well, of course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Tony, is uh, membership into the DTC for international people, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia, Asia open before December 31st or after December 31st? No, it's now. Okay. When you have a participant there, you don't have to wait like that. You see what I mean? Uh, two questions. One regarding the Social Security card. Uh, first one received was at 16, lost it. No idea where it went. Um, and then the red numbers only came in after a certain date. Do they start counting the 10 from the beginning with the old one? They start from the red ones? Yeah. Okay. Second question regarding, I understand now about the interest bearing account and how that's going to work. Good. The, the non interest bearing account, um, if we have multiple cards already, do we need multiple non interest bearing accounts? We just if you go one? in in the beginning with more than one, you need two per card in the beginning. Okay. Just to keep it clean. Just Correct. separate. Okay. Now, you did ask a good question. Now, I'm going to respond upon that question in this capacity. You have a, a card, and you lose the card, you see. And when you do that, now you only have eight. You only allow ten in a lifetime. And you lose them. So, you're never able to go into your ministry like you're supposed to do. You see? You know when you was 18 years old, didn't that make you legally competent and a full age? 
how long was it that the Messiah, you see, was supposedly off the scene? Now, I could tell you what took place, but how long was he supposedly off the scene? 18 years it was about, huh? And then he appeared back on the scene at the age of how old? 30, and he went into his ministry for how many years? Three years. Now what am I trying to show you? When you turned 18, you was legal of legal age and fully competent. They tell you that on all documents. And at the age of 18, you were supposed to go into your ministry and collect upon your social security cards. You allow 10 cards a lifetime and you can only get three a year. So what does that mean? If you went into your ministry at the age of 18, you allow three cards a year, it would take you three years in your ministry to collapse the account. The same way it took him three years in his ministry, it would take you three years of your ministry. Thus, that would make you about the age of 21. Then they say that's when you, you see what I'm talking about, they better go to bars and anything else. But you gotta understand that 21 was just two plus one that equals three, representing the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I hope you guys understand and catching on what I'm telling you. Because if you knew anyone who had maybe four of their cards, they can continue collecting their cards and they could walk right up to the DTT door and pull their BC right to the forefront. They do not have to wait and go through any application at all if they collect all 10 of their SSS. They could collapse their own account with no paperwork. <laughs> Yes. Dear Pastor Tony, I think I heard you a few times talking about uh, recently of uh, how much um, your mother doesn't want you to do this and and so on and so forth. But you you keep saying that it's necessary, and I'd like to know what is behind. What is it to help the economy? That is. If, can you expand on this a little bit? Yes. When you say it's necessary for it to happen. Because, let me share this with you. Miss up close and personal. No. Now, now notice this. How many people you know? And that ain't to say that they're not out there. And they're not out there trying it. But I was given a window to do what I'm doing. Some things I can't tell you in its totality at the time. Only thing I can tell you is the things that I've overstated. But I can tell you this. But there are not many people out there, and actually, at this time, I'm the only one that's allowed Amen. to do what they told me to do. The only one allowed. Thus, others, once they get a participant number, is allowed to bring in individuals, but they will not ever allow anyone to bring in the individuals that they're telling me I could do by the masses. 5,000. And they're going to go on the national holiday, not the DTC. They're still going to operate and function. But in order to have the economy move, you got to shut it down. Somebody got to prime it. I wonder who that would be. Now, One of the uh, forefronts that's all I am that's why my picture never hit nothing so I only do audio no video 
see. And that's why we tell the people, don't keep inquiring about me, pulling up my information. They pulled it up several times. I got several calls. People will tell you that's around me. They see, the, they see the District of Columbia call my phone quite often and chew me out. I get all this. I was just wondering, when you say it's necessary, it it's is. necessary for the economy? It won't destroy the economy? It's necessary to... Oh, imagine this. Okay. Okay. The foundations that could be done. The people over there, the water's polluted. Yeah. Look at the things happening over in all these mm -hmm. third world countries. And look what's going to happen over in your country. Mm -hmm. If this don't take place very soon, mm -hmm. it, it won't be too much left here to really be happy about. Okay. That's why it's necessary. Thank you. Now, I could have went into some other reasons, but that's one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. um, Brother Tony, I got a couple questions. One, I was born in Hawaii before the state. They said, you know, there's a file number. Same thing as a BC number? Yeah. Okay. Uh, second question is you said 2.5 billion units. 3 point. I mean 3.5. That's not dollars. No. Okay. That's good. Okay. Once we get the money. Hold it. Let me explain that. Okay. <laughs> dollars going to do what? Deflate. <laughs> what is this? Units of what? Does it ever deflate? True currency does not ever deflate, nor does it inflate. It always stays the same. Remember that. That's why when we were showing you the Red Fox stamp, we were trying to show you that U.S. on there was units of silver. True currency was units of silver. The Messiah was portrayed by 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver so happened to be equivalent to 21 silver dollars. Ah, oh, see, you missed it. You can take 21 pieces of silver and purchase the United States. No, we don't want to do that. <laughs> You're not leaning in with it. <laughs> now, you notice in the DTC you have units too, don't you? Ain't that something? No dollars. <laughs> okay. If there's a banking holiday for a year, how do we get my, our money out? Federal Reserve Bank. So we go directly to. But you go on private. And don't forget that there's a private transaction as opposed to a public. public transaction, and all of your transactions will be done on a private sector. Now I didn't get to go through the CUSIP information, and some things I'm going to share with you all when we are in the retreat. A lot of need to know things. A lot of things in which you will be able to collect upon your currency. A lot of things in which you will be able to utilize your drafts to do that I really am not. There's no way in the world. I would take, it would take really more than seven days, you see, for me to go through it. But it's just going to take seven days to try to equip you and prepare you for where you're going to be and get you your very first start, you see. Okay, the last one is, uh, at the end of um, 2007, mm -hmm. I, uh, we're telling all of our old clients to get money because there's going to be a banking holiday either the last uh, week of 2010, January, to the first two weeks of uh, February 2010, so just have cash. Now, I know where I got my info, but where'd you get yours? <laughs> Need I name people? No. <laughs> Can you keep a secret? <laughs> I know that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Be like, okay, we know exactly what's going on now. I didn't tell her. That's good. You fine. Yes. D 
the day of the retreat is that that day mm -hmm. that we talked about mm -hmm. that's the start or is that the end that's the end okay thank you Yes, hey, Pastor Tony. Uh, one of my questions was answered, and I'm asking a question for a young lady back here. Mm -hmm. If you take your first IBOE to your Federal Reserve Bank at that particular time when you present it to them, do they actually wire transfer it, or or do you get a cashier's it's check? It's a book entry only. Right. Which means, yes, yeah, all electronically done. <laughs> done. I like that. It's fast. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Pastor Tony, I was going to ask you, as far as the paperwork that we've uh, are yes. put together, um, I've kind of held on to that. Is that uh, what I'm supposed to be doing at this particular point in time? Yes, you are. So everything... Everything's fine. Okay. And you remember this. For some, and we know everyone... And I have to say this, and I don't like to say these things, but I know there's been the groups that went in. And out of the group of 40 that went in, six of them have perished. Riotous living will cause that to happen. If you overindulge in any other things, it will cause it to magnify. And we ask individuals to please be conscious and aware of individuals that you bring in because of that. We don't want to see that happen. And they didn't go in with me. They learned the process. They went in by themselves. They took a bargain. And the bargain that they took ushered them in to a whole lot less, but they felt that that would be okay to live by. And the ones that perished, it's the ones that we would have thought never would have did the things they did. And the ones that didn't, it's the ones we like, he took him in. But nevertheless, our hands, it says they are. And we say what we say, and we tell the person from the heart, please be sure that whatever you are holding on to that's calamitous, if you don't feel that you can let it go and it, it's some type of a, a habit, you know how people still utilize the word habit. A habit is something that you find yourself doing over and over and over and over and you can't stop. Well, you can stop, but you just don't stop. You know, that's a habit. Try to break those things before you go to this kind of place. Because whatever it is you do, it's not going to do nothing more than mag but magnify it. Look at Mike. Said he was drugged to death. They're not even calling all this stuff. You see, money can cause some bad things to happen to people. You see. So, and I'm going to tell you the truth. The reason why I was beginning to put forth the consent form, because I was going to see if a lot of individuals was capable of handling a million dollars a day. And if they couldn't handle that, what would have been the point of them handling this? You see? So I was going to share and teach them how to do that. Teach them how to utilize that form. You see? And see what they do. So we're, uh, that's what I was going to on the other form. So I'm, I'm on the right. Uh, I get the drift here. It's prepare, do your book work, grind it out, get your, all your ducks in a row, mm -hmm. and we do what we do when that day comes, mm -hmm. right? And then regarding, uh, uh, say, these Social Security cards, um, if you have one that you've kind of had for like 15 years, is it safe to say the first one that they would use would be the one you possess most recently? Would that be of a more seasoned uh, character as opposed to maybe or potentially getting a brand new one that would be new. Um, does it have any weight as far as uh, uh, the card in and of itself on activity or anything like that? No. Doesn't matter. So three a year is uh, okay. Yes. Hi. Can 
example, watch the step. What would be the advantage of joining the DTC over a TDA, if any? And that depends on the foundations. And some individuals here have um, inspirations and foundations to help in a more greater, grander scale where even a billion dollars isn't enough really for what they're trying to do on a global wide scale. Sure, I completely understand. I mean? Yeah, I do. The difference I see though is that if there is a limitation on 10 cards, mm -hmm. is there a limitation on a TDA? No, that's just what you're utilizing day by day by day and it's only coming off the interest. Sure. Out of the DTC. Ah, uh, okay. You see? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. If if the treasury is set up to organise and use it for you, would it? Is it what's the advantage of going in rather than utilising the treasury when they're set up to do the things? U utilising your IBOEs. Yeah. 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 That's what I said. Yeah. That's the advantage. You can utilize more at once as opposed to a little bit. Thank you. Yeah. Get a lot more done that way. Pastor, are you saying we have to actually go to the physical location of the Federal Reserve Bank for our now, first... Now, see, he's trying to open up and tell how, how you're going in. No. I can't tell that part. I did tell it before, didn't I? Okay. All right, you've but I don't want that on every CD. <laughs> All right, you've because we're doing that a special way. All right. You've talked in the past about changing dates because you didn't want to have all these people converging on the DTC at once. Are we actually in mass going to the DTC three, four, five thousand strong to that location? Now he didn't just ask the same question. You a good lawyer, that's for sure. <laughs> well, you're yes, you is. Okay. In mass, too. In mass. All right. And when are you going to disclose when the retreat and the actual closing is? <laughs> now he ain't listening because he asked that question, didn't you? Well. <laughs> no. It's on the audio. <laughs> yeah. With the uh, interest bearing account, mm -hmm. is it supposed to be closed prior to uh, the event or no? no? Wait until after. In the event, we're going to close it in the event. Okay. That's the reason for the seven days. A lot going to happen in in the event. Okay. Uh, oh, it's going to be nice. <laughs> uh, second question. Uh, the guy, I think two guys before me, he said something about the TDA. What exactly does that mean? talking about the banking thing that everyone's doing. The consent? The yeah. I think you were yeah. as a consent. Okay, I just want to double check that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, just briefly, you mentioned about the the wizard acceptance form and the wizard mm -hmm. payment form. Yes. The uh, DTC is the drawer on the, if I have it correct. You're the always the drawer. The DT the only difference would be between the draw E, the draw E B is the bank on the acceptance, and the draw E B is the DTC on the payment. On the payment. Mm hmm Okay. And um, just briefly on something that was said earlier, um, as you said, if, if we understand what's going on here, um, hundreds of thousands of people are losing their homes. And the economy is about to be crashed. And they're spraying chemtrails on us daily. Uh, there's also um, a 
factor of mind control, which is being perpetrated. And as we know, agents um, are attempting to stop everything that's good. My wife and I <clears throat> have found many solutions, um, and we've always found that with those solutions, true solutions, there's always been some factor of disinformation involved. And people, unfortunately, some individuals trying to discredit and devalue the people that are involved in it, um, which is what we see with the emails. Um, but if you don't see that what this is about you don't see that this man is divinely ordained to do what he's doing, then maybe you need to go and check with your creator and with yourself. And um, <clears throat> you'll come up with a better answer. You won't be answering, asking these questions about why it should be done. And, uh, as we become closer to the time, the good is more manifest and so is the um, not so good. So that's it. I think we, everybody should here is blessed to be here. Yeah. Every, we all should be uh, seeking this with, our, with due diligence and <clears throat> we should be grateful to the Creator, grateful to this man right here because he's been put in a position to do what he's doing and he's standing up to do it. So that's all I have to say. That's Tony, how are you? Uh, maybe a little bit premature, but always been a bit curious as to how one operates once they're in the DTC and uh, restrictions on the ability to draw against the account and um, issue mm -hmm. bills of exchange and that nature. If you could touch on that. Yes. Now, that's a good question. The way you operate when you're in there is privately. The restrictions on the capacity of being able to function and operate in that account would be that you have seven units that you allow to utilize off of each card per year. Thereby, the first unit that you're going to create, that was the CUSIP information form that I was going to go through. The first one is going to be the one that I create with you. This, I'm going to go through the first one with you. That's why I had you to look over those particular articles, 1 through 6, 11 to 13, and so forth. You see what I mean? 46 section 3, 47 section 153, you see what I mean? The first uh, International Bill of Exchange, I'm going to make sure that we all do together. According to your capacity, you see, we're going to have individuals there, you see what I mean, that's going to be prepared to help individuals in their duties to make sure that you be able to write it correctly. With that amount of numbers of people, there will be individuals sitting there to be able to say, well, this is the amount that I'm going to handle in this retreat. They're going to already be prepared because I'm going to uh, drill them and make sure that they understand these things before we get there. So they'll be able to sit and they're going to have a certain number of people that they're going to handle per day. We're going to have, well, I can't tell you all the stuff yet. <laughs> you guys are going to make me tell you how the convention going to run. <laughs> now, the first international bill of exchange we'll write together. Let's say, give you an example. You say I need to handle a million or 10 million units per month for a period of 12 months. So you're going to do 10 million units. Go back to the CUSIP information. Let me, get, let me show you how that's written. Remember, you only allow seven per year. That's it. After the seven per year, you can't do no more until the next year, okay? You see the coups of number information you'll have in this particular box. The interest rate will go in this particular section. Now, somebody playing around. The interest rate will go in here. Take that big old square over there. Now. See what y'all doing to me? The final maturity expiration date will go here. Let's say if you was to write up 
an international bill to pay yourself every month. So you got 12 months to pay yourself at $10 million per, okay? And the expiration date of that, if you started it today, from today to the next year of the same day, you'll pay yourself in increments 12 times. The principal offering amount, you will take that and you say at 10 million, 10 million multiplied by 12, that will be 120 million for that year. So you'll put the principal offering amount in that particular box. The type of issue will be 12 months, and then the initial offering price again will go in that box. It should be uh, 120 million. And that is the way each one will go. And that is the time expansion in which they're set up. That would be how you write it. And that will be the very first one that you'll write to yourself. You'll notice on this particular document, you got nine lines instead of seven, just in case you make a mistake. Okay? But you're really only allowed to write seven. Don't let the other two lines fool you, because you think you still can write a couple more. And you'll find yourself all screwed up. Okay? So some individuals will stipulate that they want to write a great big one at the, for the... First time, so I'm going there with two, and they just say, well, what I'm going to do is collapse the first one. I'm going to take out the whole 3.5. I still got a second one available that I can do other things with at a later time. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm just going to show you how to write the first one. However you write it, that's on you. Whatever you're going to do, I don't want to know about it. Okay? Now, you got six more to write. You'll know how to write it. It won't be complicated. You're going to utilize that one with the wizard form, and then you have another international form that you're going to utilize. Of course, you're going to learn how to create checks. You are the drawer, so since you're a drawer, that makes you a drafter. That means you need to know how to write checks, and a check must stipulate on that check at least two times international bill of exchange in order to make it legal and binding. Okay? We didn't went so far over the limit, it seemed like it's 12 o'clock. Go ahead. You can ask your question. You know, I, the question I had is very simple. Um, I, I understand that for us, it's overwhelming, all, all this information, and for, we have to pinch ourselves to know this truth. But um, I remember in the Bible when Nebuchadnezzar had a big place, and he say, oh, now, okay, well, I had a lot. And, and, and it's, my question is that we need to go to the retreat with something in our, our mind. Because, you know, none of us here had $10 million. $10 million is $10 million. And what we will be doing, we, we have to have a mindset and understand the, the world. The war is in the end, and then a lot of people, they are perishing, a lot of people need help. That we need to think, really, what we want to help with that money. That's right. Because $10 million, I can buy a beautiful home, hard car, help all my family, I still have less money left. Mm -hmm. And what happened when I die? Why, what? This is an opportunity that God put into us to help people they are perishing. And, and, and that's what I want to know, if we can go with uh, something right and something in the mind for what we will be doing with that money. That's right. Now, I can't tell you what you're going to do with it, but you're exactly right. You do need to think of some type of a foundation or something in which you will be able to be responsible for. And if you don't have one, go look up someone who does, because it'll help you help them. You see what I mean? Even if you have no, no foundation or nothing, look up someone who does. Ask someone. Look in the community. Get your book and look up foundations. See a good one that's really doing something that maybe might interest you that you might feel necessary to fund, you see? And you're not doing it just so you can say, well, I want to kick back or this or that. You're doing it because of the genuineness of your heart. That makes a greater difference. Yes. Is that seven IBOs per card or per year? Per card. Per card. On the foundation side, um, my background is trust in the states. Mm -hmm. um, 
with the Panama Foundation and the way they set those things up. Could we, could we set that up before we go to the DTC and have our funds? Yeah, foundations there? could be already established even right now. Okay. And then it's just ready for you to fund it. Yes, you can. Yes. Very good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. You do not have to wait on that. You can already start the ball rolling now. That way, when you get where you're going, you're not starting to set up and establish. It's already established. Now it's just ready to go ahead on and do what's necessary. Okay. Yes. All right. The, the funds that are coming from the DTC, those are private funds, correct? Correct. Okay. So realistically, how, how, how much of these private funds will, will we be able to monetize into the public? Yeah. Yeah. All of it? I mean, it, I wouldn't want to, okay. especially dealing in foundations and things. Right. I wouldn't try to monetize too much currency and, and flip it all over like that. That wouldn't be. First of all, it's way too much. Oh my goodness, you know. Right. But yeah, you could, but no, I wouldn't. Is is because you wouldn't be able to function the way you want to function. Will you have examples of yeah. maybe some we'll, structures that? Oh would, yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. Hi, Tony. Um, you mentioned as you approach the D-Day that you, it might, it'll, the situations will worsen w with respect to... I hope not. Uh, well, my question <laughs> to you is what tips can you offer because let's say people are being approached by the FBI or photographs are being taken of their vehicles or things like that. Do you keep a low profile, or what do you do? Do you go in hiding? What are, What do you recommend? You should be low profile anyway. And try your level best to just stay as quiet as possible. Okay. Don't, don't get yourself caught up in all the battles and the calamities that go out there, because that don't do nothing but ginger strife. And we're not in this for that. We're in this mm -hmm. thing for a reason and a cause. Mm -hmm. We don't want to. We don't want to harm nobody. We just want this thing to go through s smoothly. You don't never see me on the internet because I don't. I don't want to be there. It's not the place to be. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they do. I, I'm not into that. Okay. I just say this. Just shh. that's the best way to be. You so do you don't that, go. You don't go into their jurisdiction and try and resolve their issues. For what? That's not my job. No, no. Jack Jack Smith recommended, you know, resolving an issue by going and approaching them. So I just, I didn't know. There's two conflicts of interest here. And uh, I didn't He's know. He's talking about something different, though. He ain't talking about this. Nah, that's not what Jack is talking about. No, I, I understand. <laughs> but if you get approached, if you get approached by anything, you just don't answer. You don't go into their jurisdiction at all. Don't enter the contract. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Thank you. Now, you might be talking about something different, and I'm answering a whole other level of questioning. I know what Jack talking about. Jack talking about courts and all them other things. And he's right. Certain things you do, certain things you don't. Where I'm at and with what I'm doing, I must make sure that I stay silent for what I'm doing. You see? To make sure that this goes through right. I do my level best. You see? Yes. Hello. I'm asked to ask this question. Um, do Does one need to um, have a trust or a foundation already open and available to manage everything? Yeah. Okay. We're gonna go through that. That's that's gonna, all. That's gonna be covered at the retreat. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, I apologize before. I never had paper ready, but the death certificate. If we could just quickly go through the steps, it was a death certificate required. Mm -hmm. Social Social, social Security, Security number. Um, eligibility form. Question, yes. Sending it to. Send to Washington D.C. D.T.C. and the I.R.S. What was the first one? Send it to Washington. 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 Mm -hmm. Where and what? What in Washington? Who handles all the records? Who handles all the records? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Now, because this is um, the death certificate is is 
going to is issued from Canada? Is mm -hmm. it still sent to the IRS? Well, you, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, the IRS. You just you took the first letter out. It's still the IRS. Yes, I hear you. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else? No. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You guys got more than you really. <laughs> This is like the opposite of the Titanic. No one knew they were going to drown, but no one knew we were going to live. Right. We're like the opposite of the Titanic. Okay, that is the seminar for this uh, week.